Hi and welcome to another scripting tutorial. You'll notice my voice sounds amazing. It's because I got a new microphone. So enjoy that today. Uh, today we're going to talk about learning, or we're going to learn how to make disappearing platforms uh, so that you can play like, I don't know, you can make some kind of obstacle course or whatever or uh, what I've done in the past is make just kind of a little game where people try and, you know, make paths in front of each other so that you can try and make the other person fall. You've seen that in, I think, Death Run also. It's, it's in the lobby. But we're going to make one of those. And so we're going to just start by inserting a part. And be sure to anchor it. <laughs> and also, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's what we're going to start out with. But... I'm going to explain. So, a couple episodes ago, by the way, if you have not already, go watch the other videos before you watch this one, otherwise you might not understand some things. Uh, or you can feel adventurous and watch this anyway if you have not watched the other ones. But we're going to start out. Um, okay, well, let's just start out with a platform here. There's an interesting way to do this. I'm going to show you how to do the easy way and more comprehensive way first and then I'll show you how to do the better way and I'll explain what that better way is later. So here is, you know, we're going to have multiple of these so we're going to have maybe, maybe we'll have, I was thinking we'll have, oops, we will have a path, you know, kind of a thing. Oh, we can use a new transform tool, huh? Woohoo! So we'll move this down. Haha, -ha, that's amazing. Okay. So let's just have a little path going along here. Oh, but we can't do that because um, we just have to make this first script first. Let's name this platform. Okay, well, let's script it. So what, it's, what we're going to do is obviously um, we'll have function, what shall we call it? What do we call it? Because we want it to fade out and then come back, right? So we will go function fade in out. That sounds right. So function fade in out. And it's going to take a part. So we've done this before a few times, I think, when, you know, we have our touch thing. So script, or let's, let's have a variable here. So platform equals script dot parent you should know what I'm doing by this point platform dot touched connect fade in out okay so uh, remember part here is going to be the part that the person touched when they touched it okay so we're going to use a for loop like we did before a couple episodes ago for um, and we want to set its transparency right so its transparency is going to fade uh, well let's look at it so its transparency is zero when it's you know opaque when it's solid and it'll kind of ooh. Let's see, that's not what it'll fade in as we go. So if we go 0 0.1, a little bit transparent, 0 0.3, more transparent, 0 0.8, almost transparent, 1, completely transparent. So this, this little for loop here is going to be, we're going to write a little for loop that fades it out. So it's going to increase its transparency. So for it'll increase the platform's transparency. So, oh, but first of all, obviously, we need to make sure, uh, I can't remember if I've done something like this in a previous video or not, but we need to make sure that the part that touched it is a member, you know, is a part of the player. Okay, I'm back. I actually just had to, <laughs> I went to see if I taught about this before in a previous video, and I did. Back in episode 5, we talked about, you know, we need to make sure um, that whatever part touched this part is actually a character, um, you know, 
just because. Uh, oh, actually I did, so before we were working with the humanoid, um, in this case we're not really working with the humanoid, so it's not going to break anything too crazily if we don't include this, but we still want to do it. Just trust me. So, and if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. <laughs> so if um, part.parent find first child humanoid, also I did zoom in for you guys, then uh, it will do a thing. So, yep, so this just makes sure that there actually is a humanoid in the part. So, um, the platform will only fade if a character touches it. So, then we're going to go platform, uh, or let, let's do it a really simple way first. Let's just wait, so let's just wait two seconds and then say par dot, or, or no, no, platform dot transparency equals one, so that would make it totally transparent. And then we also want to make it so that it, you know, its can collide is off so that the player actually falls through it. Platform dot uh, can collide equals false. You can see can collide is a property over here, so that's kind of cool. And you've probably worked with this before. You just uncheck that, and it'll make it so that players can walk through the part. But we're gonna leave that checked. So platform dot can collide equals false. Um, so now at this point, after the player has touched it, it has waited two seconds and then it has disappeared and dropped the player. So then we are gonna we have to make it come back so we can use it again. So we're gonna wait. Let's wait another three three seconds, and then copy paste this. Uh, platform transparency equals zero. Can collide equals true. Pretty self-explanatory, I think. And yeah, so that's sort of gonna work. Um, so so let's try it out and see what happens. Uh, let's let's make a couple of these just because. Oh wait, no. What do we transform? Skype. Hello, Skype. Um. 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 Okay, that was distracting. Anyway, we were gonna test it, weren't we? I think we were gonna test it. So let's hit F5. I don't know about you guys, but if you move, it seems to me like the um, camera movement, like while I'm in studio, it's really slow. But anyway, yeah, okay, it seems to work sort of good. Pretty cool. So we can kind of jump on them and stuff. They come back. However, I think if we touch it a whole bunch and go crazy, it might. No, it seems to kind of work. Okay, however, when we start, um, we haven't scripted it super great, and I'll, I'll show you why. Um, it, you'll, you'll, you'll see kind of why it's a little, you know, a little weird when we start adding the animation to it. So let's get rid of these because we're going to just do it with this one and we're going to copy it and stuff. Okay. Do, do, do. Yep. So instead of just waiting for two seconds, what we want to do is, you know, just replace this part with the animation kind of thing. So we're going to use a little for loop for that. So for i equals zero through one. And increments of 0 0.1 do, and you've seen this a couple episodes ago in the four uh, loop scripting tutorial. And I'll just kind of refresh you on this. So the first two things are, you know, one where it starts, and uh, the first one is where it starts, and the other is where it ends. So we're gonna set the platform's transparency. To I, uh, and don't forget to wait. Uh, we'll wait 0.1. Okay, so for each iteration, it's gonna say platform.transparency equals I. So the first time, it's gonna say K 
case, transparency is going to be zero, so it's not going to really change it. Then it's going to change it to, um, well, then it's going to add 0 0.1 to that, so it's going to change it to 0 0.1. And hopefully that makes sense. I got to sneeze. It's not coming. Okay. It didn't come. Man. Okay. And then in that case, we can kind of get rid of this. You'd want to keep that if you were going even more minute, which I might show you later. Maybe not. So yeah, so that's going to over the course of one second. So um, we went from two seconds to one second, but it's going to over the course of one second, make it more invisible. So uh, let's copy paste that. Copy paste. And swap these around. So remember, uh, zero and increments is negative zero. Okay, so remember, uh, this is the starting point, and then this is the uh, where it's going to end. But if you're if you want to have the starting point larger than the ending point, you have to make it negative. Otherwise, I actually found out. I think this will start counting up, and it'll go infinitely. I think it just, uh, and that's not what we want to do. <laughs> Um, I think that's what happens anyway, so that's why we tell it to go in increments of negative 0 0.1. And we can leave this line the same and that line the same. And we can get rid of that. Okay, now it should be good. Okay. Now, let's see if the problem comes up that I was talking about before. So we jump on it, jump off, it's going to go away. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. You can see it flickering. And if we keep jumping on it, it just kind of goes crazy. And that's not what we want. And why is it doing that? Well, it is doing that because both of our legs are touching it. And so, and they're not touching it at really the exact same time. So what's happening is it runs this function twice and it's running like one one of these little blocks of code are running at like just a slight uh, at a slight I don't know offset to the other one offset of time to the other one so I don't I mean I can't really logically think of how this is why it actually is flickering but what we need to do is basically add a what's called a debounce to it uh, I think that's what it's called anyway so I'll show you how to do that how to fix that little flickering problem so we only want it to run this code if it's not already fading away or fading in right that makes sense right I hope uh, you don't want it to run this code if it's already going so let me let me visualize that for you and this will work just fine if we only touch it with like one foot so let me show you let's touch it with one foot and go off oh, I accidentally touched it with both one foot oh I touched it with my arm I think so it was okay yeah so if we just kinda nick it since only our arm touched it it was able to work just fine let's see okay I'm trying to okay what I was doing was basically okay we wanna make it so that it doesn't flicker so we only want it to run if it's not already running so it's not already running so it's okay if we touch it and it runs so let's touch it boom you know it runs twice which isn't what we want basically so hopefully that makes sense so what we're gonna do is say this is how I like to do it some people like to do it, do it differently but this is the most comprehensive way I think so we just say ready equals true so it's um, you know ready means uh, it's ready to go it's ready to you know it will do the thing for us. It will fade out and then back in. So it's, what we're going to do is say, let's see, if, there's two ways to do this. We can go if ready, then. So if, if we are ready, boom. And you can also go if ready is equal to true, but that's just pointless and actually is less close to English than this is. So if ready, then it will do our thing here. And make sure I had your little end. Um, then also we want to go ready 
equals false, right? So we're gonna say, okay, it was ready when we touched it, um, and now we're gonna do our thing, but first make sure ready is false so that it will not happen again. Okay, so, but then we wanna turn it back on a little later, so ready equals true. So it's gonna set it, okay, we're ready again. We've done all of this, it's faded out and back in. We're gonna say ready equals true. So that's one way to do it. Uh, and then there's a little different way. So what you do is you get rid of that and you get rid of that and that. This way is just, it, this depends on your personal preference. Uh, we just say if not ready then return. So what return does, I'll probably explain that later uh, on another episode or something. Um, but this will basically cancel out the rest of this. It's just it's just gonna say, okay, end the function right here. Don't do anything else. So if if we're not ready, then uh, so let's say the player previously touched the part and it set ready to false, you know, and then and then his second leg, uh, just a tenth of a second later, touches the part again, and. Uh, it says, oh, we're not ready. We're going to just return, stop the function. You know, that's kind of what it does. Oh, and then make sure to still say ready equals true. I don't know if I got rid of that before. So that way, I mean, you have this weird little block here. But that way, uh, you, you're you just one tab inward, if you know what I mean. So this is kind of one way I like to do it. We'll just keep it like this. Okay. Uh, and that should fix it, honestly. Let's go back. F5. Go over. And boom. Seems to be working. Let's jump on it a little bit just to make sure. Uh, did that work? <laughs> Alright. Cool. Yep, it seems to be working. It's not flickering anymore. So you might think, hey, we're done. Um, but okay, let's say, let's say, oops, we're gonna go over here and we're a little bit above now. Let's make a bunch of these. Do do do. Maybe make some go all the way over to the island. Oops. Blah, blah, and you get it. So we go over here. Let's say, okay, we're playing our game. We're like, okay, this is cool. La di da di da. Um, but then you realize, well, darn, it's they're too close together, but they're coming back too quickly, so the player is able to. Uh, kind of go backwards even though I don't really want him to or something like that what if basically what I'm saying is what if you want to change the timing on all of these and what if you say well man I don't really like how um, how they're kind of the animations a little bit choppy I want to fix it uh, well normally you'd have to go delete all of these you know go uh, ooh I'm lagging I think no we're good What's going on? Okay. <laughs> that was kind of weird. The transform tool is broken. That's a little weird. Okay, so you have to go all the way back to this one and then edit your code. So I'm going to show you. This is a little bit more advanced, so get ready. But I'm going to show you how to make this better. So before you had all these, all these things with all these scripts in them. Oops. So as you can see over here in the workspace, you look, they all have a script in them. We're going to make it so that this works with only one script. What just happened? I think I deleted. <laughs> yeah, I deleted the, the, uh, this thing. Okay. And, okay. So we want to make the, um, all of those work to work with just one script. So let's, Let's just take this over. Oops. Take that guy over here. Let's make a duplicate. Group these together. And we call this platforms. This is what we're doing. 
is one way to do it. You can put this in a folder as well if you want. And get rid of the script in one of them. And move this script. So this script is going to be inside. This is kind of actually similar to what we did over there. Um, and over there, by the way, we, you know, used, well, let's see, how, what did we do over here? Yeah, we had, we had a single script run all of these lights. Uh, I don't know how well that went, uh, but here we go. This is going to be a little bit more complicated than before. I think, anyway. So we're going to go, hmm. Let's just get rid of of all of this because if you think about it this ready thing it's not gonna work quite the way that we um, it's not gonna work because of you know you're gonna have multiple parts so you'd have to have you'd have to have a ready variable for each of your platforms and there is a way there's an easy way to do that but I'm not going to explain it in this video I think there's a more simple way of doing it simple but less a little less theoretically reliable uh, in my mind anyway but you know we're gonna okay let's just jump into it so what we're gonna do oh we just need to get rid of all of this actually uh, well not really Hmm. Okay, we're gonna use. Well, for now, let's let's make this interesting. What if we have a whole bunch of these? Let's make just a whole bunch of them. Do do. Watch me place blocks. Episode number. What is this? Fifteen. <laughs> okay. Fade in. Okay, so we basically want to add this listener to all of our platforms here. That's pretty much as simple as it gets. So for IV in pairs, you know about this. I talked about it a couple episodes ago. Uh, in script or script dot parent get children do. Uh, move this guy in here. Oh, it's messed up. All right. So, for each of scripts, script dot parent get children. So for all of uh, script dot parent is you know this platforms model, and for each of these children, do a thing. So instead of using platform, we're going to use v because we set v v in this case. Uh, is going to be for each of these, you know, so in a certain case V is one of these platforms, we don't know which, you know, applies to all of them. So V dot touched, connect, fade in, out. Oh, you know, we actually probably could have kept that old thing. Hmm. <laughs> oh well, we'll just write it again. Okay, so this will work, sort of, but Okay, well, I guess there's two ways we can do. This. Let's do this here. So we only want this fade out thing to happen for the uh, for the parts, and but it's also going to try and do it for the script too. Uh, we don't want it to do it for the script because it's not, you know, it's not a part. So if we try and set a script transparency to one or something, it's going to break it. So we want to say um, if v colon is a uh, base part then I don't know what I'm doing okay I'll explain this so basically basically all things have well, let's hold on a second okay so we're over on the wiki if we just go to anything so if we I just went to the part page this is the whole wiki page on a part shows you all your properties of a part this part has a lot of properties has a lot of functions too is a right here you can see that basically let's see what it says it returns true if the object has is an instance of the given class or if the object class inherits from the given class uh, that might sound like nonsense but basically what it means is uh, you can use this to make sure it is a part so instead of saying uh, we could also go if v dot class name is equal to part then so if we look at it, 
it has a property called class name and obviously you can see here it's part and no matter what the name of the of a part is they're all going to share the same class name but what if you wanted to use uh, like wedges or something then their class name would be called like wedge part and um, then you'd have to say if v dot class name is equal to part or v dot class name is equal to wedge part uh, okay not not so bad but then what if you wanted to do, to do a corner wedge part oh a corner wedge part then you have to go or that too so it's just way simpler just to go v if v is a base part uh, a little shorter or it's quite shorter actually and it also works if a thing is a wedge part or something like that. It's just kind of just a better way to do it. So um, now we don't have to worry about the, and th this knowledge is good for everything else too. Uh, that's why I'm teaching you this. It's not just going to be useful in this instance. So now we have, okay, so now it will not run this for the script, which is good. So it won't break, and let's write our stuff again. So instead of using that red, ooh, we can't do this either. Okay, instead of using, ooh, hmm, fade in out, fade in out, fade in, hmm. Hold on a second. Okay, so I just thought of it. We have a little bit of a problem here, uh, which can be easily, ooh. Maybe it can't be easily fixed. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna learn a new thing that I wasn't planning on teaching today. This episode is getting quite long, but uh, yay, long episode. More learning. So we're gonna get rid of that altogether. Uh, so yeah, buckle in, cause this is gonna be. I I think I haven't taught this yet. Pretty sure I haven't. But instead of just declaring an entire function up there, we can just do it right here. So v dot touched, and remember what that means. V is any of those platforms. So if a platform is touched, it will connect to a function, and we're going to write it right in here. This is called an anonymous function, I think. That's what I've heard it called. Function, and normally when you write function, you'd say like function fade in out, and then put your parentheses there. However, we only do the parentheses, and just like that, and end. And there's our function right there, and then we can kind of that to make it more readable okay so that's a little weird uh, hopefully that makes sense you can you know just directly call a function like that and you still need to do part so this part is going to be whichever part touched the platform kind of like before so basically the exact same thing except we get rid of the name of the function and it goes inside the connect parentheses this little end parentheses here, that corresponds to this one right here. Okay, so hopefully that's not too complicated. If you don't really get it, that's okay. You'll just figure it out. I trust you. <laughs> um, but for now, just do this. Copy my code if you want. Um, so yeah, how, how long? Are, we're like 20 minutes in. We've got seven lines of code. <laughs> okay, but we got this, guys. So V, wait a minute. So right now, well, let's make this a little more better. So instead of saying V, we're going to say platform. So this will be easier. Platform. Place all the other ones. Platform. Okay. Now, if it's touched, we just kind of want to do the thing we did before. If part uh, dot parent find first child humanoid then it will do the thing uh, plat for, for i equals 0 through 1 and 0 0.1 do uh, and let's just comment here fade in uh, for uh, and then we're going to wait let's say 3 seconds 4 seconds and then for i equals 1 through 0 negative 0 0.1 do. and by the way Try and script this before me instead of just watching me do it. Like seriously, if you want to learn how to truly script, you have to do it yourself. You can't just sit here and watch me do it. Um, it's all about practice. Can it's like muscle memory seriously helps in remembering how to code. 
things. So yeah, just trust me on that. So try and kind of code this. Get as far as you can before watching uh, further. Get as far as you can on your own. And once you get stuck, then come back to the video. Uh, fade out. Okay. And now we can replace these. Oh, we also want uh, platform dot can collide equals false. Don't forget that. Platform dot can collide equals false. It might seem a little weird weird here that I'm kind of going all over the place, but we're doing it. And I can pause and write this all out. Um, you know, off camera, but I feel like that'd be a little less learnifying. Okay. Platform uh, transparency equals uh, I. Weight 0 0.0 or 0 0.1. And let's just go ahead and copy this. Okay. All right, so so we have kind of what we had before, but we still have the it's gonna flicker. Well, let, let's actually make sure that it you know kind of flickers. I'm gonna control S to save F5. Make sure I'm still recording. Let's go over here. Might work. Yeah, it, okay, it's kind of working, but it's flickering, so we need to make it not flicker. And you know how before we had that ready variable uh, to make that not happen? Well. If we do that, well, let's just, I mean, you can probably already imagine what's going to happen, but let's just do that. Ready equals true. Uh, and then we had it like this. If not ready, then return. And, and we can do that all in one line, too, but I like to have it like this. Um, And then we had ready equals true. Let's make this wait a little less. And you'll see what happens now. Uh, try and predict what's going to happen. Just, you know, if you if you predict it, then you're smart. Good job. We go like that. Okay, it's fading away. Oh, it's still flickering. This isn't nearly what I thought would happen. <laughs> That's a little weird. Hmm. Well my mind is a little bit blown what I was thinking what was gonna happen is oh never mind ready equals false <laughs> if you caught that mistake good on you now it will happen now the thing I was thinking will happen okay okay that's a little weird so this second one didn't go yep it's just what I thought would happen oh we forgot to make it true again oh well uh, it doesn't work on the second one until the previous one is finished. Basically, that's because, you know, we have a single ready variable. It's like, okay, it's gonna wait until one of until this certain platform is done, and then it's gonna go do, go on to the next one. So that's not optional. But we need to make that true. Get rid of all this ready junk. Do do do. So we're gonna instead do. If part or no, if platform dot trans, we're gonna check its transparency. Transparency equals or if its transparency is larger than zero, then return. And that is it, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. We're done for today. Almost. I'm gonna wrap it up pretty soon here. This should work, I mean. I, I mean, anyway. Uh, cool, it seems to be working. So it does not, uh, as, I mean, I don't feel like I have to explain what I just did very much. It will only run this thing as long as it's completely opaque. Aha, but we do have a problem. What, what is the problem exactly? Th I've had this happen before. So if you do that sometimes, if we look, if we look at, the, if we look at a platform's transparency is zero. That's weird. Okay, we're not as done as I thought we were. Okay, we're gonna go debug some stuff. Uh, I don't know what's wrong.
Hmm. Platform. Let's do some prints. This is how you debug. Print. If you don't really know exactly where to look, say, okay. Why? So, what was our problem? It wasn't. Uh, they the parts faded back in. And so we know that the. Uh, okay. Well, let me guide you along with me. So we went over here. Uh, I, hopefully I'm being, oh, workspace .platforms, a script line 5, unfinished string, near a thing? That doesn't tell me what, line, oh, line 5. So that's the first thing you do when you debug. Uh, oh, that's because of this thing. Never mind. Okay, yeah, so the, the thing you want to do when debugging seems to work this is weird clear the output yeah so you know it's not working when we jump on it it works the first time but not the second time come back onto it doesn't go so what's happening is you want to see okay what 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 must be happening is that it's returning even though, and we looked to see that its transparency is um, is above zero, which it wasn't. So it should be running this. So we're gonna do a little print here. We're gonna say print um, transparency is larger than zero. In fact, I'm actually gonna debug this off screen just in case it's just a dumb problem. Okay, I got it to work. Um, and now we've encountered a thing that happens with everyone who's trying to learn a script. You you get perplexed because you don't know, like the code obviously should be working and you look at the properties, everything should be working, but I looked to see, I looked at a certain platform that I had stood on previously and its its pro its transparency property said that it was zero, which means it should be running this. However, the only way it wouldn't run it is because um, it thinks that it is transparent. In which case, in our case, it wasn't, and it was printing that it was transparency was larger than zero, which was false. So, what happened? It's just it was kind of just a little bug, I guess, with this four loop thing we had to I just added this line um, this wasn't here before I just recently uh, before I resumed recording I had to add this line to say okay platform dot transparency equals zero um, so that, that's something if I was learning this and I was at uh, probably your level uh, mr. or mrs. viewer I wouldn't have figured this out on my own. I've been like, that doesn't make any sense. It should be uh, working, and then I would have moved on to something else. So, uh, but as as time goes on, don't worry. Uh, things like this will um, come naturally. You'll be like, okay, well, what do I need to do? What could be wrong? Um, so that's a part of experience and scripting your own stuff. So that's a lesson we learned today. I think. That's the most important lesson, honestly. If you take anything out of this episode, just remember, don't be discouraged if your code should be working, you're not getting any errors, and you can't figure it out. Um, just remember that you will learn eventually how to overcome these seemingly impossible obstacles. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope this has been good uh, good quality. I, I'm a little out of practice with this uh, script teaching stuff, so you'll have to forgive me. Uh, let me know how I did, and let me know if um, I used to be better before. I feel like I, you know, I I feel like I'm out of practice, like I said. Um, but yeah, I have cool plans for the future, and I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Goodbye.